Hey guys, so doing a fave and fails, so just stuff that I really enjoyed or didn't enjoy this month. There are more faves than fails, which is always great because I don't want to waste my money. Now, before we get into the video, subscribe, hit that bell, and you'll be notified whenever I post a video. Like, comment, and my social media will all be in the description down below. So this portion of today's video is actually sponsored by Odin's Eye, very kindly. So I'll just go show you guys a little tutorial that I did using some of their makeup. I used the Hourflower blush in Water Lily, which is one of my favourite shades. It's got a super shimmery, shiny, peachy look to it. Uh, and I think it just looks amazing. It blends super well. It's super pigmented and blinding. It's just so good. I also used my old favourite. This is one of the first products I ever received from Odin Zion. It's the Solmain highlighter palette. And I used the champagne shade, but all of these are absolutely stunning and just look incredible on the skin. I also used my favourite eyeshadow palette. This is the Alva. It's um, the second palette I ever got from them. And it's just pink, and gorgeous. These shimmers are still to this day some of my favorites. I use them all the time and you can tell a lot of them have like dips in them. That's how much I use them. Uh, you can tell which ones are my favorites and I just I love this palette. It's super blendable. It's pigmented. The shade selection is stunning and I love that the pans are a little bit smaller so you can fit 16 shades into a palette that would normally fit maybe 12. Um, so you're getting more shades with a slightly smaller palette and I just think this is so travel friendly. You have yellows, you have browns, you have pinks, you have like mauvey shades. I just think it's an amazing palette. This is genuinely one of my favourites. I also topped it up with one of the new mini palette shades which are stunning and glassy and beautiful and I finished the look off with a lip cream in Little Jasmine which this is a cult favourite for me. I use this all the time. I feel like I'm really like almost done with it. It looks creamy, it looks glossy but it stays on the lips for a long time and it leaves a tint behind which is incredible. The smell fantastic and this shade is like my lips were better it's just beautiful so thank you to odin's eye for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get into this video also everything on my face and everything i mentioned will also be in the description if you want to buy anything let's start with a huge fave for this month it's natasha denona palettes i already mentioned this in my ranking palettes of this month video I actually this is the first time i've ever tried natasha denona palettes and i think they're really good just as a whole i haven't had a dud yet they're all really good quality, the shadows are really nice, the mattes are pigmented and blendable and just buttery soft and then the shimmers 90% of the time are super like shiny, glittery, foiled. There's one dud in the mini star palette which is this blue shade, I already spoke about it. It just doesn't come out that blue on the eyes, it's still nice but it's just not what I expected. I have the, just to go through them quickly, the mini Zendo which, okay if it doesn't reflect properly, there we go, it's like a fiery pink. And then I have the mini gold, which is just the mini version of the gold palette. And then a mini star. I have the love palette, which came out for this Valentine's Day. It's one of my favorites. And then the retro, which is super interesting, super like unique color story. But I also have the big gold palette. <laughs> of course, when I try a new brand, I just have to buy everything. So this is what it looks like inside. I think it's such a nice color story. And this shade right here is something that Lich just dreams are made of. Like I can't even explain it. This one's stunning, this one's stunning, this one's stunning. They're all beautiful. The mattes are super blendable and super like thick and almost wet but still blend out beautifully. So yeah, I have no complaints. These are quickly becoming my favourites and I'll probably be putting... So for my project pan I do this thing where I rotate palettes. So for a whole month I'll be using one or two palettes and trying just to see how much I can use of them. And I'll probably put some of these into my March project pan. I still don't know which ones but I'll probably pick like two and then try to use those. What else do I have? I did a full face of Charlotte Tilbury recently where I tried multiple, obviously a full face of Charlotte Tilbury and I have a few favorites. That full face was probably one of my favorites. It was one of like the more successful full faces. So I really, really, really like the Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray. It just keeps my makeup locked in for ages. Like if I spray this on, I can like feel my makeup just sticking on. It's like hairspray, but like less. It's like still nice on the skin, it feels great, and the spray on this is really nice. So this is quickly becoming one of my favourite setting sprays. It doesn't add any dew or anything, it pretty much just dries matte. So you might want to double up with some other setting sprays, but yes, let's move on very quickly. So this month I tried four highlighters and they're all my favourites. I can't pick a favourite, I'm going to be honest with you guys. So let's start with the first one, Pat McGrath Labs Divine Rose Skin Fetish Ultra Glow Highlighter. It's not super powdery, but it's also not super wet it's not like a cream it's not a powder it's somewhere in the middle it shifts from gold to like a pink so it's basically peachy on the skin um i mean which one am i wearing today this one yes 
So this is what it looks like. You can't really tell the sheen, what, what kind of color it is on camera, but you can tell it's very glowy. And it doesn't emphasize any texture, which is really nice because sometimes highlights can make you look a little bit more textured than you'd want to be. But yeah, you can tell it's like super wet. So I'll just swatch them all for you guys next to each other so you can make comparisons. This is what this one looks like. It just shifts like a beautiful pinky gold. Then I tried the new ColourPop Candy Floss Super Shock Highlight. Usually these in the plastic packaging are much bigger, but this is a completely different formula. So they usually have them super smooth and sheeny, almost like a like really wet feeling, but very slippy and they don't have any glitter in them. This one is a Super Shock Highlight, but it's smaller and it's a glittery highlight. So if you don't like glitter, this is completely not for you. Don't even attempt to buy it. But if you like a glittery cheek and you like pink highlights, then I have something that you might really enjoy. It's basically just a beautiful baby pink, but it comes out on the hand super like chunky and glittery. And then when you apply it to the cheeks, you can tell it's just like pure glitter and it's pink and it's very nice. I don't apply this with a brush, I apply this with a finger because I feel like it sticks on the skin a little bit better and it doesn't fluff out as much. And then you can like directly pin it to where you want it and it's stunning. Like this looks less pink on my hand than it does on the cheek. Like it just looks hot pink on the face. Then I actually tried the Anastasia Beverly Hills Iced Out Highlighter, which is supposed to be the same formula as the Amrezi Highlight. And it's the same packaging, so I'm assuming it's the same formula. But this one is beautiful. Look at it. It's like a yellow gold, almost green, but it's also white. And the design on it is to die for. So let me just swatch that. It comes out basically yellow gold on the face, but like a white yellow gold. You can't really tell, but you can tell it's like more yellow gold than this one. So, so far, those are the three shades. I feel like I managed to find four completely different highlights this month, which is nice. And the last one is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Glow, which is, I think this came out literally recently, like maybe a month ago or something. And it's super wet feeling. Like it's not, once again, it's not a cream, but it, doesn't feel powdery either. And this one is the highlight I use when I don't really know what eyeshadow I'm doing yet because it goes with everything. It's just a super natural champagne-y, bronzy highlight. So those are the four. We have Divine Rose, Colourpop, ABH, and Natasha Denona. Completely different highlights. This was so justified, honestly. I, I loved all of these. Then with the Cloud Spun collection, which is this highlight, I also bought the eyeliners and I bought a dark pink one and then this light pink one. And this one is my absolute favorite. It just makes every look look so cute. I put it into my waterline and it's just like this beautiful like bubblegum pink and it's super pigmented. Like you don't need to swipe too much to get it to be this pink. It stays on the eyes for a really long time. So that's been a success for me. From the same collection, I actually bought the So Juicy Lip Gloss, which is my first time buying this formula. And it's supposed to be a plumping gloss in the shade Candy Coated. And this one looks so amazing on the lips. I've been using this along with one of my favorite lip liners, New finds so i'll show you guys that one and i've used this in a few videos before i've been wearing this all the time and it's plumping minty and just looks so juicy it does it really does this is my favorite the pink looks a little bit intimidating but it doesn't look like that on the lips so yeah just find your shade and love it because it's amazing the lip liner i'm talking about is the ColourPop lip liner in minute man i have a whole vault of lip liners and this was in there and i grabbed it and it's the best lip liner to ever grace my lips. This has quickly overtaken the Kylie Forever and Always because the Forever and Always was such a universal lip liner where I could use it with any look. This is even better and it's so much more affordable. It doesn't look that dark on the lips. You can make it pretty much like pretty light and you can use it with pink, you can use it with orangey, you can use it with nudie. Like there really is no limit to what you can do with it. Like look how stunning that is. Oh, it looks so good on the lips. Like I would have never thought that this would have been that good, but it it is. Then we have the Wild Child palette, which I put at number two when I ranked my monthly palettes. And it's such a good palette, honestly. This is super interesting. It's like a like a chocolatey, warm, brown, caramelly type. This one came broken, so I just pressed it back in and it looks very used. There's like a neutral brown in the middle. It's like a glitter shade. And I just, this is super blendable. Like this is probably one of their best quality palettes that they've ever released. Like it's really, really good quality. It blends super well for such deep shadows. Like it blends really well. And I think this is one of their best nudes that they have. So yeah, I'll put all of that in the description if you want to snag this one because it's really affordable and I just think it's such good quality. Uh, however, they also released these super shock shadows along with all of the other stuff. And 
one of these is a bit of a dud and then the other ones are good. I won't swatch these because I don't have any more hand space. I've already swatched this before so I'll just insert the video that I have of it. Uh, so this one is called Run Wild and it's the lightest one in the set and this one looks so good in the little tin thing but it comes out so sheer that if I did a look like this you could barely tell I was wearing anything. It's literally just like slightly pinkish glitter because there's like a pink reflex going through it and that's all you can see there's like no pigment with it at all so that was a bit of a dud however these ones so good so like i showed in the swatches this is this one it's just so stunning it's like a more satiny shimmery shade it's really beautiful you can really create like a nice smoky eye with this and then they have a deeper one and it's also just such a beautiful chocolatey brown i really like these but the other one is a dud so if i knew that it would perform like this i wouldn't have bought it. i would have just bought the two other ones but you know what i'll probably just use that as like an inner corner highlight whenever i wear this palette because that's pretty much all i can use it for i'm like not going in any particular order i'm just grabbing as i go from the charlotte tilbury full face i have the airbrush flawless finish foundation and this is the only thing i've worn this month pretty much so every time you see me in a video that is the foundation i'm wearing it is my favorite foundation of all time i don't think anything can beat this this is the one if i had to get rid of all of my foundations and keep just one foundation it would be this one it's full coverage it's not drying it stays all day it doesn't settle into any fine lines or any pores it actually seems to minimize my pores it doesn't get too oily, but it doesn't get too dry. It doesn't cling to anything. It's just the perfect foundation. I don't think I'll find anything better than this ever. And that is a bold statement to make. This is such a stunning foundation. Oh my God. If you're looking for a stay all day, super matte, no, not super matte, uh, like a comfortable matte foundation that has really good coverage. And I don't like matte foundations, but this one just did something to me. It's like, so good so stunning i just i don't think i'll ever find anything better than this and that's that's the honest truth then i have the beauty light wand in easy highlighter and high blush and i don't know what the shades are spotlight and pinkasm so this is the blush and this is the highlight i'm actually shocked by this highlight so i have another highlight oh my god i completely forgot about this anyway for a cream liquidy highlight it's super blinding like it looks incredible and the shade is stunning it's like a squeezy tube sponge thing and it's just really nice this is the highlight you can see it's just super blinding and then the blush is like a beautiful pink let me just tap a little bit on here and it's also got like a bit of shine going through it you can blend it out and it just looks stunning these are some of my favorite cream products i'm just waiting for the contour liquid bronzer thing in this packaging to come back because apparently it's like one of the best cream bronzers to exist so i'm waiting for that to come back in stock but it's always out of stock everyone's constantly buying them out so i'll have the whole trio but for now these are my favorite cream products they just look so good like, look at that highlight oh my god it's just beautiful and then from the charlotte tilbury full face the legendary brows brow gel is really good because look how tiny that brush is you can get every individual hair the color is stunning for me it's like a beautiful like cool taupe shade what's it called yeah I think that's called fair brow it's really good once i'm done with all my gels that i've already got open for the project pan i'll quickly and swiftly move on to this one and the last fave correct am i correct yes no second to last fave we have charlotte tilbury airbrush bronzer in one fair pale and it's huge humongous and it's also a refillable pans you can just pop this out and buy the refill instead of having to buy the whole compact which is obviously more affordable this is expensive but it's also literally humongous it is 16 grams it's just like this it's such a beautiful shade i'm not wearing it right now because i'm using a different project pan bronzer but once i get to this oh my god it's so smooth and buttery it's just you can't really tell but it's just really nice it's buildable for the summer i'm going to probably have to have a deeper one because this one is the fairest and it's really fair so if you're paler than me this is going to be your go-to bronzer it's such a good formula such a good shade and i'm glad that it's refillable i hope more brands start to do this because it's just more sustainable that way instead of having to buy the whole compact and throw away the old one with the mirror and everything i just think that way you just get to keep a really nice compact and just refill the inside i think it's genius and then the last fave is the becca which is very sad because i don't know if you guys heard but becca's shutting down like they're closing 
they're not doing anything anymore. But they released this new thing and it's a light shift to finishing veil. And I thought this would be kind of like an hourglass dupe, the hourglass powders. And it kind of is. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It looks like this. This is scattering one and it's such a gorgeous finish. I tried it once. I'm obviously not using this right now because it's not in my project pan. I'm using the hourglass one. But I think this is a close second. And if you, I mean, before they completely shut down, try and grab some of these. They're really smooth. Like it's barely, it's not even powdery. It's just like, it's super sheeny shiny like it's got a very similar formula to the hourglass one like you can barely feel it on the skin it's really really good i think this could have been it for them if they weren't closing down i wish they could you know do more of this i think this is this is good for them however oh my god i have another fave my another fave the actual last fave is this from the wild child collection it's the lippy stick from colourpop in the shade brat pack they released three but this is my favorite shade it's so chocolatey and yummy Look at it! Oh, do I have any more space on my hand? Yes, okay. So stunning, oh my god. One of my favourites. And I love this formula. I don't like the matte lippy sticks formula, but I like this creamy one. It's so stunning. My fail of this month is the Becca Light Shifter Dewing Tint. This came out with the powder as like a set collection thing that they released. And this is the lightest shade they have, but it's super deep. I, I mixed it into another tint. And it just made that one really deep. It's like, I don't know, it's weirdly pink. It's not really, like if you look at that, that's that's not the fairest that I could possibly go. Like it's got like a weird cast when you turn your hand. And it just made my skin look really like too tan. I just felt like it looked really like weird with the rest of my body. So I'll have to play around with this and use it. But for now, I just wish they had other shades. I'm gonna try and like use this on its own. But like I said, I just don't want to look weird, you know, because I just feel like if you don't match your stuff, it's just going to look strange. And I feel like if I turn, it's just going to leave a cast. I haven't used this on its own. I mixed it into a foundation that made it quite dewy. But yeah, I just wish it came in a lighter shade. And then another fail is the Jouer. I already spoke about this, but I've been using it all month because I'm hitting pan on it. So I just want to finish it off and forget about it. This is the Jouer Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder. It is everything. Well, it's nothing that it says it is. I've already hit major pan on it. I'm really proud of that. That's going to be my project pan. However, this looks awful if you apply too much of it. If you apply a little bit, it's still powdery and dry and chalky looking, but I can get past it with some setting spray. If you apply too much, it's got like, it doesn't have a sheen. It has shimmer in it, like actual shimmer, which you can't see. But look how chalky and powdery that is. Uh, you can't even tell. Anyway, it's super chalky, super powdery, but it's got weird chunks of shimmer going through it. And if you apply too much, it like cakes up in one spot as if you applied like really cheap highlight, like really bad highlight on your cheek. It just doesn't look good at all. But I use it because if I use it sparingly, it looks fine and I'm already hitting pan on it. So I'm just gonna finish it and then forget about it and never buy it again. One of the worst powders I've ever used. That would be it for my fave and fails. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below anything you want to comment down below along with your faves and fails of this month. Hit that bell, you'll be notified whenever I post a video. My links will be in the description along with any other links to anything I mentioned today. And yeah, see you in my next one. Bye guys.